No, I saw, I saw a doctor today and I got oh, here. six more weeks. Oh, no. Six more weeks or what? Until I get back on my bike. Under his you want to get back on? Until I get back. All right, it's uh, 6.30, uh, the uh, Monday, June 5th, 2023 meeting of the Pittsburgh Planning Board is called to order. Uh, we have a quorum saved for uh, Ms. Alfreda Alston, who's uh, absent, but uh, we have all the right for our board members, so it is indeed certified as a quorum. Uh, <laughs> the agenda is, uh, yes. I do Director. Want to, yeah, I do want to add one thing to the agenda. When All right, sure, that. of course. Uh, we have an agenda before us, but the, uh, the director would like to add an item. Yes, for new business D, I want to add a uh, approval of an amended meeting schedule for the remainder of this year, this calendar year. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll take that up then uh, after, uh, after the North Village small plant. If uh, that's to the uh, liking of the board members, do I have a uh, motion to adopt the agenda as uh, presented and slightly modified by the director? So moved. Second. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Carl. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, it passes. So uh, now we uh, move on to a, a public comment period, and I believe we have had uh, some folks sign up to uh, speak. We'll allow 15 minutes for public comment, and uh, each commenter will uh, have okay. three minutes. So, I'm sorry, she's going to go get the sign up. Oh, all right, it's very, very good. I do not have the sign up sheet, so we'll uh, pause she's, for a moment. She's going to go get that. Don't mind. Hey, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We have actually four and the top pages for public comments, and then there's a sign up sheet for each agenda item. Did anybody wish to speak in public comments? No? No. Okay. No public comment. Cool. All right. Well, we'll uh, move on then uh, to the approval of the minutes from our May 1st, 2023 meeting. Uh, does anyone have any uh, modifications, changes, uh, edits that uh, should go into the final version of the minutes before we approve? I, I might, Eric. Terry uh, and Ray were stated in the minutes as alternates. And they are indeed full of. And members. I thought they were appointed yes. before the meeting started or as the meeting started. Uh, all right. Well, so, yes. Well, uh, I'm unsure of the timing, but because the uh, board of commissioners uh, uh, advanced their uh, positions, so we'll uh, we'll amend that to uh, to uh, honor them with the um, um, full title. Yeah, that's a Hi, Paul. That's welcome. Right. That's all right. All right. Anybody else have anything that needs to be uh, corrected or added to the uh, minutes of May 1st? Do I hear a motion to approve? Hey, Ray Carney moves. Do I hear a second? Thank you, Bill Baker. All in favor of uh, the minutes uh, as corrected by Carl? Aye. Aye. Uh, any nays? The uh, minutes uh, stand approved. Moving on to uh, new business, we've got four items now, and uh, the first item before us is uh, SP 202002, which is for the Green Beagle Lodge uh, site plan, a, moderate, a minor modification to add a uh, 
and pin ground the pool for the uh, animals who are uh, boarded there. And uh, Molly, are you presenting or? That's Janie. Oh, Janie. That's me. So it's very simple, real quick. They just want to put an in ground pool, I believe it's 20 by 20, uh, inside the already walled area. Um, so since they had applied for this prior to the UDO adoption, um, it's coming through to do a minor amendment. So that's really all it is, is just going through the process. <clears throat> that's all I have for it. Okay. And you see a diagram up there on the screen. And uh, I guess that'll be a nice uh, amendment to the animals. <laughs> Any uh, questions or uh, comments from the board uh, members with regard to this at the vote? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully not that big. <laughs> <laughs> it means it means all the planning department and rules and regulations of the town, correct? Yes. So we would just make sure that it's um set back from the property lines, mm -hmm. um, which usually in ground pools don't have setbacks. We don't regulate the depth or anything of the pool. So we meet it meets our standards, correct? Yeah, and it's a little different for animals. There won't be humans in the pool. I hope not. Well, maybe just eight animals. I don't know. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or uh, comments on this? Seems uh, pretty straightforward. And I guess we don't need a consistency statement on this since we previously approved the uh, site plan. So I'll uh, I'll ask for a motion uh, to approve or disapprove of this uh, pet pool at the Green Bean Watch. I move we approve the site plan modification. Thank you, Carl. Second. Second. Thank you, Charity. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> item uh, B, our second item tonight, is uh, white parcel yeah. conditional rezoning. And uh, this is an application by Chatham Park Investors, PD 23178. And uh, to whom do I look for this? Is this uh, Janie again? Do you also want to? I gave you a script about the Zoom comments. And you questions. did, yes. Um, let, let me uh, let me go to that. Uh, we do have a Zoom connection, and if there are folks uh, out there in the television audience uh, and you wish to comment or question anything, please type your uh, comments into the Zoom kind of comment line below this screen, occurring right here, and uh, a staff member will read those uh, questions or comments into the record at the appropriate time. And uh, please uh, begin your comment with your first and last name, your home address, and uh, then your comment. Thank you. So this one, it's another rezoning parcel. And this one, uh, staff and the applicant went back and forth for quite some time. And the main change from the packet that you all got is just a few minor edits to the proposed conditions. So the applicant asked to um, add in the subject property after the parcel number. As far as vegetation, um, I had two similar statements uh, because of our discussions. So the applicant has suggested to use the language existing vegetation meeting UDO standards may be used to satisfy the buffer requirement where the red lined um, text is struck through. And then in the condition about parking spaces, um, instead of the three point D, they want to amend that to say automobile and bicycle parking spaces located on the subject property may be used to satisfy parking requirements for any property in the Chatham Park PVD within 500 feet of the boundary of the subject property. Um, <coughs> Those are the, the main concerns. We did receive comment from one citizen. Um, so I can go ahead and pull that up. But I'm open to answering any questions. And the applicant is also here. Do you have a presentation? Yes, we Nick? do. Okay, yeah. they have a presentation. So Very while good. they do that, I can pull up the comment. Very good. Present away. All right. Give us a second. We have some handouts too. If you want to take one. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'll share this on the screen. Too. All right. <laughs> Just 
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Nick Robinson. I'm Mr. Chairman, Planning Board members, town staff. I'm Nick Robinson. I practice law here at uh, Bradshaw Robinson Slaughter and Rainer LLP, 128 Hillsboro Street, uh, Pittsburgh, 27312. Um, delighted to, to be here actually in person uh, with you all tonight. Um, representing the Belfort Channel Park Adventures LLC in this conditional rezoning for this 2.2, approximately 2.2 acre strip of land that, as you can see in your handout and up on the screen, is essentially surrounded by the Chatham Park PDB. Uh, as Jamie uh, reported, we're, we're seeking to rezone this property from RA zoning uh, to multifamily residential conditional use. And the reason that we seek that zoning designation is that this site is the site um, that will allow the anticipated uh, approximately 300 to 338 affordable housing multifamily units um, to be developed on this parcel and on the adjoining Chatham Park PD parcel. So we'll show you a conceptual plan of that, or if you peek ahead in your packet there, you might be able to see it. Um, so as you know, there's really, we've been through this before, there's really two parts to this process of uh, requesting um, your a recommendation of approval for a uh, conditional zoning request. So the first is just making sure that the 10 factors that are listed in the UDO uh, supporting a rezoning can be met by the uh, proposed rezoning. And we, we included uh, an extensive narrative uh, in the application regarding those 10 factors um, and your, your staff has reviewed those 10 factors that we submitted um, and our narrative and has concluded that all 10 factors have been or can be met. Um, and so I'm not going to go into great detail on those except to highlight uh, that factor number four, which addresses the question of whether or not um, the proposed rezoning addresses a, a community need, a demonstrated community need. That would certainly be met in this case because the rezoning will, as I mentioned before, facilitate the development of affordable multifamily units, which is often expressed by this board and the board of commissioners as a community need. The second part of the review and approval has to do with making sure that the proposed conditions applicable to the rezoning are satisfactory both to the town and to the applicant. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to report, as Jamie did, that we worked very closely and very cooperatively with Jamie and Molly and Randy uh, in the development formulation and the reformulation of this list of nine conditions that you now um, have set forth in front of you with changes that Jamie um, described a moment ago. And so with those changes, it's safe to say at this point that the applicant is satisfied with those conditions. And I think it's true that the staff also is satisfied with those conditions as modified. Um, so, I just want to summarize by saying that this, in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Robbie just to give you a little brief uh, synopsis of the um, project itself. But I just want um, everyone to take account of the fact that this really is an ideal location for um, multifamily and affordable housing. Being, as you can see on there, that's near the transit corridors, both east and west, and then heading north through Chatham Park. Um, for affordable housing and um, this minor two acre rezoning really unlocks that potential. Um, so hopefully we have anticipated the questions that you might have. Of course, our, our goal for tonight's review is to come to the point where we can hopefully receive a recommendation from this board of approval. So I'd like now to just turn it over to, to Robbie Olam from Withers Rattle to, to walk you through some of the uh, brief uh, project information. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Um, so yeah, as you know, I've always liked sharing some uh, images. I think it just helps to understand, especially the rezoning stage, but I've only got two exhibits so if you can get it in your handouts, but really just to show you, you know, what this, this was a two acre piece that was done uh, within the original Channel 4 PDD, so it's been recently acquired. So it's really just a simple infill development. But if you look at this, we're anticipating to develop this as one site in this area outlined in red. Um, this is Chatham Parkway that's already built. This is the Christian Village and Highway 64 business, as you can see here. But utilities are pretty much already stuck to the site. There's a lower line. 
uh, within Chatham Parkway. There's existing gravity sewer just north of the site coming down this creek here. The Chatham Park War Recovery Center uh, is right here where the hand is. Uh, so that would be tributary to that. So really, and just wanted you to be able to see that, you know, why we're proposing this or what it looks like. So this is conceptual site plan. This is, if you rotate this to the right, uh, north will be up. So uh, you can see again, Chatham Parkway here. Of course, this is just you know, rotated 90 degrees. But um, so we're, this is what we're proposing as a site plan to come in. So now I know this helped with staff is once we, again, we're, we just started work on this. We're literally just modify and put some color to it today just to bring it to this meeting for you to kind of visualize. Um, so, uh, but, but with that, I mean, hopefully you can see that we're proposing, you know, when you come in, when you see a site plan, you say, oh, okay, we see what we're trying to develop the site as now. So, and it took a little uh, working with staff. We came up with the conditions um, and went back and forth on that. So I think staff made some good recommendations on this. I think we got to a place that we're able to develop Hopefully, uh, roughly with further site plans on the side. With that, uh, that's, that's all we have to share with as far as the graphics. But here for any questions. Robbie, what are the two? I can't, I can't read. Yeah, yeah, those good, are. Good, good question. That is basically future development. We're just showing maybe some office buildings there. Mm -hmm. So we do not know yet. So, but that's that's what we anticipate. Maybe office building could be anything. That's what the blue sections yeah. are. Okay. Yeah. And just, I mean, and I think everybody understands this outline in blue here. That is the track that we're, we're considering for the rezoning right now. Is just this little two acre strip right here. You call it white park. Yes, sir. There's a difference between what you have on the screen and what we have here. It's rotated. Yeah, yeah. So it's a rotated 90 degrees. And this, this, this one. This. Two this Robbie, how uh, uh, tall would you anticipate these structures, uh, the residential structures? We're anticipating this to be four story apartments. And again, this is going to be affordable housing. Right, right. And the parking allocation? Yes, parking with, with, with problems. What's their current? What's their current? Uh, there's a couple of, there's a house here, but I think that has been repurposed. Uh, but yeah. for the most part, it's vacant. Yeah. Yeah, that was a house there that um, they gave and it was repurposed and moved to another site And actually, I think that was the white house. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 PDD for Chatham Park. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly up to date with the report. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that is the best to show you physically yeah. how it interrelates to the rest of the land. This is the most amount of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was my question. Yeah. Jamie, yeah. is, is the affordable housing aspect uh, obligatory in the conditions? I don't see it. But I'm just scanning, really. Or, or, or can we make it obligatory? Mm -hmm. No, you can't require um, affordable housing. If the applicant wants to put in there, that they they will commit to a specific um, amount of affordable housing, then that can be in there. But you can't require them to have it. Okay. <clears throat> there was a. I did receive an email, so I'd like to address the questions that were in there. Please. Um, so. The citizen asked, um, once plans are submitted, are they going to be submitted separately since it's just a strip of land or are they going to be combined? It depends at the time that the plans are submitted. Um, so our UDO states that we cannot create bifurcated conditional zoning, which means we can't, someone can't zone just a portion of a property conditional zoning. It has to be all or none. Um, but as far as recombining, that would be an exempt subdivision. So that would be a potential. So if they do recombine them, then it would just be essentially one plan. Um, so it depends on what happens at the time of submittal. Um, there's a question about the buildings on that specific strip. The, it's a similar thing, but also one of the can, one of the waivers in here is to not have any internal buffers and also to not have any internal setbacks. So that way, how you see that the one of the buildings crosses um, three different properties essentially, uh, it's so that there's no setbacks in between there so it can cross the boundary line. 
there is um, a setback from 64 and a buffer from 64 though. There was a question about parkland. Um, it doesn't, the condition doesn't say 40 dwelling units an acre. It just says this property will not exceed 40 dwelling units on that specific property. Um, and then the plans will need to be evaluated once submitted as far as the parkland goes. And there is a suggestion for condition number nine. So I'll pull up um, if you're done sharing. I'll pull up mine. So the suggestion um, is a possible change to uh, state the Greenway, Orphe, and Lou rather than also Park Acreage. Um, since this is not part of the official PDD boundary area and Parkland probably won't be available on that specific track. And that also multi-use paths don't count for park acreage if they're located in the right-of-way and they're only if located in open space outside of the right-of-way. Um, so if you all want to discuss that uh, condition nine, right. then you can do that or if the applicant wants to respond. I'm not sure um, I follow that exactly, but I, I don't think it's certain that there won't be park land on this property. So we, we like to leave the condition like it's written, just in case. Just uh, off the top of your uh, heads, uh, Robbie, what's the appro approximate uh, distance uh, from this uh, uh, white parcel to the nearest uh, green green uh, green belt uh, connection or recreational facility? We will actually have greenways. Okay. <coughs> if I recall, the greenway runs. Uh, Right along Chatham Parkway, does it not? It does. Actually, I probably should have added that. That's a great question. We've got Chatham Parkway with the DOT project, as I mentioned, on some past rezoning. Right. We'll have a multi use on both sides, right. a 10 foot multi use trail, so to mm -hmm. run both sides in here. But there's also a greenway that we're building just on the north side of the stream, and then we'll also do one on the south side of the stream yeah, that, will that will connect to that. So, and then illustrative, maybe it's that, that illustrative uh, mm -hmm. plan is probably three or four years old. Yeah. But there's recent plans that's associated with this development to the north that you can see uh, that we've actually worked out the alignment with the town. Those plans have getting ready to be submitted for construction. So uh, but there will be greenways within literally uh, less than 500 feet. Okay. Any other questions or comments, either via Zoom or from our uh, board members? If not, uh, we will uh, move to the uh, consistency uh, statement. And uh, having reviewed the zoning district change application to amend the zoning map of the town of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh case PB 23178 and accompanying documents, and having uh, considered information from the planning staff of the town of Pittsburgh and comments from the applicant and other persons pursuant to section 160D604 of the North Carolina General Statutes and chapter 10 of the town of Pittsburgh Unified Development Ordinance. The Town of Pittsburgh Planning Board at its scheduled meeting on June 5th, 2023 today finds that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the uh, Town of Pittsburgh Land Use Plan and, the, and that the rezoning request is reasonable in the public interest and will benefit the surrounding community considering the site is of a sufficient size. Do I have a, a motion to uh, approve uh, this uh, application for uh, consistency with our uh, land use uh, plans? So moved. Thank you, Carl. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Bill. All in uh, favor of uh, adopting the uh, consistency statement? Aye. 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 All those passes unanimously. Um. Eric, yes. There are some proposed conditions. Oh, so all right. Just we need to uh, yeah. weave those in. Okay, proposed conditions. If you all want to. Yeah. Just propose. You can adopt it as it was submitted to you all, or you can. Sure. And that's. Those suggested. Uh, yes. These are the nine that you bring. These are the nine that we've talked that about. Correct? Right. Yes. And I'll share my screen to just show you. Right. Um, those additions. I'll amend my motion then, Eric. To, all right. We'll, to, we'll, we'll to hold back include those. Okay. There's nine as amended. The nine as the amended. Th the three is amended. So yeah. adding so in the subject property into yeah. the title and right. the vegetation. 
vegetation requirement right. or the existing vegetation requirement and the off it's considered um off-site parking requirement or you can do conditions or the title condition two and condition three d are the ones that have been amended <clears throat> So shall we uh, shall we uh, re re uh, nominate this and revote it to uh, include the pr proposed conditions? Okay, I, yeah, I again move that we uh, approve the consistency statement with conditions as as shown by Janie on the screen here, with with those additional amendments that are above and beyond what we have in our packet for uh, parcel seventy two thirty seven. Do I have a second? Thank you, Bill. All in favor, aye. Hi. Aye. All opposed? So passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have to do something else besides the consistency statement? I think that wraps it up, doesn't it? All, as uh, long as the general the statute's changed to where as long as you can tell from the minutes that it was a consensus that it was approved, then that's fine. You don't have to do two separate motions. Moving on now to uh, item C uh, under uh, new business, the Chatham Park North Village Small Area Plan Amendment. And uh, the uh, proposal is uh, lengthy and weighty and uh, detailed. And uh, Molly Boyle has done an exceptionally good job of, uh, of um, summarizing this for the awards uh, consideration. Very good roadmap, Molly. Thank you for doing that. And I uh, turn over the floor to you to, uh, to explain. Good evening, everyone. I'm Molly Boyle. I'll be giving the staff presentation for the Chatham Park North Village Small Area Plan Amendment. And before I get into the amendment itself, I've received a lot of questions from the public about the legislative review process and the concept of discretionary authority. So I'm just going to cover those briefly, and then we're going to jump into the amendment so that everybody's on the same page. So discretionary authority is just the power to make decisions using your own judgment. And in a legislative review process, which is what this is going through, um, there are three key steps in that process. There's a staff review, the planning board, and the board of commissioners. And each of these three groups has a different level of discretionary authority. So staff has the lowest amount, uh, and our job is to enforce regulatory documents. So in this case, that's the Chatham Park Master Plan, the elements, the small area plan. And we have the discretionary authority to interpret those documents so that we can enforce them. But that's about where our discretionary authority ends. We can't consider public opinion when we're making our decision and our analyses. It's just a very technical decision. You as the planning board, you have more discretionary authority. So you're able to take public input into your consideration or into your, uh, your decision making. But you're not the final decision authority on the item you're making a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. And then, of course, the Board of Commissioners has the highest amount of discretionary authority. They're going to take all of this into account, your recommendation, my recommendation, public input, the applicant's presentation, and they're going to use their best judgment to decide whether to approve or deny the item. So now that we've covered all of that, we'll jump into the actual amendment. So the uh, North Village Small Area Plan, it was adopted in October 2021. Some of you were on the board at the time. You remember it very well. It covers the sections of Chatham Park that are north of Highway 64. And it's a guide for development in North Village, but it's not meant to be used alone. It's used in concert with the master plan and the elements for Chatham Park. And the applicant has submitted an amendment, and that's why we're here tonight to review that. So jumping into the staff analysis, and this is attachment three in your binders, it's that roadmap that Eric was talking about. And I'm going to focus my presentation on the areas where I received the most comment or the most concern from the public. But of course, the entire amendment is up for your review and your consideration tonight. So once we're done with the staff presentation and the applicant presentation, any questions you have, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. So in uh, chapter three, transportation, the biggest concern uh, that I identified from the public was uh, Eubanks Road and the Spine Road. And this is uh, most clearly, the change is most clearly displayed in figure 3.2. So I'm gonna pull that up now. And here on the left, you have the version of, that's in the plan right now. Uh, and then here on the right, this is the proposed change. So here on the left, you see that Eubanks Road in green coming down this way. And on the right, the proposed change, Eubanks is here. And then we have this purple, what I call the spine road in my, uh, I'm false laughing, in my uh, staff analysis. 
And in some of the public comments and also uh, in a previous version of my staff analysis, I misidentified this as Eubanks Road. It's not Eubanks. Eubanks is coming in through this way here. This is proposed as a two-lane town road. To be clear, the public's concern was not whether or not Eubanks was closer to the Haw River. They were concerned about a road being close to the Haw River. So in my staff analysis, I mentioned that the figure is conceptual. That's not to say that you can't have concerns or comments about the proposed location. Um, that's something that you can discuss you know, amongst yourselves. Uh, just, I like to make that point when we're talking about long range plans, that sometimes people get confused about the difference between that and then when the development plans come through and road location very slightly. Um, from staff's perspective, the location of the road will be permissible if it meets the permitting requirements. So when the applicant would submit the development plans, uh, we would be looking to make sure that it meets any necessary permitting requirements. I included some of those in the staff analysis here, and I've got them up, uh, up here on the screen. Uh, from a planning standpoint, we'd be particularly looking at the repairing buffers. So the state requires a 50-foot buffer from the top bank of the hall. And the Chatham Park elements require some additional riparian buffers off of that. They vary in width depending on where you're at along the Haw River. Uh, the, the proposed fine road would not be an allowable use in one of those riparian in the additional riparian buffer area. So we would be reviewing to make sure the road is outside of that. Chapter five, open space. This part gets a little more esoteric, so I'll do my best to get the conversation going. And of course, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. The public was concerned uh, about the loss of tree, uh, tree protection. And uh, I think that's clear to see in a lot of people reference figure 5.2. So I'll pull that up on the screen as well. So I can get there first. There we are. So on the left, you have the original. This is what's in the plan now. On the right, you have the proposed change. And the red stars, there's no change there. These orange stars, you'll notice a decrease in the orange stars. And the orange stars represent tree covered planning areas. So this is the part uh, where it gets a little bit more esoteric. The elements define uh, tree covered planning areas. So I'm going to pull that up here as an area of land that contains either a village center, a shopping center, a single family development, or the portion of section 7.1 north of Russet Lane Road. And the, the trees need to meet the element for that development site. So you have a very clear definition here that is defining tree coverage planning area as either A, B, C, or D. So when we're talking, when we're talking about uh, interpreting ordinances and regulatory documents, there's something called rules of thumb. And uh, one of those is that the inclusion of one implies the exclusion of another. So in a definition, if you have a definition that explicitly states this thing is either A, B, C, or D, that means it's not E through Z. So in this case, the applicant is not changing these definitions. Those have not been proposed for amendment. So if we're seeing a change in the maps, that means the type of development that's being proposed is changing. And the type of development that's being proposed does not constitute a tree coverage planning area. All that being said, when the applicant submits development plans, um, we staff is always looking to make sure it's consistent with tree coverage area requirements, which are reflected in several tables in the elements. And those tables apply to tree coverage planning areas and lots is defined under tree coverage area here. So again, this kind of gets into some of the minutia of the plan. Um, and then lastly, chapter nine, public facilities parks. There was uh, concern from the public about the inclusion of the lot park, uh, which would straddle the line between the Chatham Park Plan Development District and being the lot property, which is outside of the plan development district. Uh, this is permissible in the public facilities element. So I specifically in my staff analysis, I call out the uh, objective, I believe it's general objective 1B. In consideration of service areas, site conditions, and other matters, new facilities may be located within or outside of Chatham Park. So from staff perspective, that's an, uh, that would be allowable, the inclusion of the lot. The applicant's also proposing to allocate uh, parkland uh, from Southeast Village Metro Park 
to North Village. And probably the easiest way to show this is if I go ahead and pull up <coughs> the map of Chatham Park. So again, north of 64, we have North Village. Down here in the southeasternmost corner, this is uh, the future location of Southeast Village Metro Park. So it's about 210 acres. And the applicant was proposing to allocate about 30 acres here to North Village because the amount of physical parkland in North Village is uh, proposed to be decreased to 199. So the planning director in, uh, in conjunction with the Parks and Recreation Director did not feel that this was consistent uh, with the public facilities element, uh, citing the two objectives on my screen. So they proposed a condition uh, about that specific thing. I won't read it here. Once we get down into that, we can go into, uh, into detail. But in a nutshell, the condition says that once Chatham Park reaches a certain stage of development in North Village, they would either need to A, submit a payment in lieu uh, so that the town could build or maintain parkland in and around North Village, or they would need to provide more parkland in and around North Village. And with that, I'll just remind you of the options you have for action tonight. These are the same actions pretty much that you always have. Um, after the staff's presentation and public comments that you want to receive and any deliberation, you can recommend that the Board of Commissioners approve the item, approve the conditions, or deny. Or if you feel like you need more time to review and discuss it, you can table this item to the meeting in July, and then it would be the first item up for review on the agenda in July. Thanks so very much, Molly. Does the applicant have a uh, presentation? Yeah. Chuck Smith with uh, Channel Park Investors. Uh, probably want to be working in tandem there. And I think you know, Molly just did a great job. On her presentation because she's stolen much of my thunder, <laughs> um, which is that's a good thing. That, that is very good because when I mean we've been working together for the last few months trying to make sure that everyone was understanding what was uh, being proposed here and, and make sure there weren't any questions from a staff perspective. And uh, you know, we got to a point where uh, the, the condition that will be talked about a little bit later, we've agreed to that. So um, I will say, starting out. And, and with Chairman Brown, you brought up this uh, saying that you pointed to your document. Oh, yes, yeah. a very lengthy document. It is indeed. Um, we, we are not asking to approve a small area plan. We've got an approved small area plan. So what we're asking is to, to approve, and I, I count three issues. Molly covered two of them <coughs> that will rise to the level of causing us to come back in and ask for a revision to the small area plan. Many of the other things we could do in the existing small area plan. And when you look at them, this is where we spend a lot of time working together. If we change the number on page three, that might then domino into page 12, 17, 82, 90, you know, with that changing that number somewhere else. If we, a good example is that road changing because that road is on every graphic in the book practically. So when you, when you look at the list of um, revised graphics, you know, so they list that long. And it's because many of those are the, the, the result of a road moving and, and it touched many of those graphics. And so that was a changed graphic, even though it wasn't necessarily something that rose to the level of need to revise the smaller. Um, so what we're really asking for here is to uh, consider the approval of those three uh, variations that we think we did not have before that we're asking for here. Um, the first one, but right now, this is just looking at the North Village. That's uh, representing the land uses of the North Village. Um, we're going to zero in on the uh, what we call our village center and hospital area. But the next slide will go to yeah, it compares previously what we had in the small area plan and what we are proposing here. Um, this started with uh, UNC Healthcare coming to us and wanting to move the location of they were talking to us about uh, locating a hospital. And that location was on the northwest, they the, probably put the interchange there. That's, the, that's where the hospital was going to be right there. And they wanted to move to the southeast, so just diagonally across, move their site there. Okay, that gave us the opportunity. And some of this started uh, from comments from Commissioner Bonnets and others uh, that were looking to get more density along Chatham Parkway from what we had. So if you look at 
on the left, the current, the current small area plan, that orange area was what we consider to be our um, village center. With this proposal, we shifted that over to be more along China Parkway. The, and then when you look at the density or the, the residential numbers that go along with that, there's a higher level of residential in that location because that's we we'll probably go to the next slide will show. This is a again the the concept plan that we've got for that area. And those mm -hmm. there's those red and burgundy buildings. Um in the middle of the site there are a combination of either standalone apartment buildings or apartments with retail on the first floor and apartments above. Um, and we've, in that area, I'm gonna say right that the, uh, the, the requested number in section 6.2, I think it's 1,475 units, um, but between 1,000 and 1,200 of those somewhere along those lines will be west of Chatham Parkway. And we talked a little, a little bit about this during the grant from the zoning when we had that before you a couple months ago. And that that lower um, portion right there of grant, that's part of the grant from site, but it works in concert with this site again, trying to establish that more um, dense residential area. And then what we're, and, and you, you've seen what happens in the past number of years with uh, non residential. Nobody's building office buildings now because how many people have started working from their home? Uh, there's a whole shift in the way offices being looked at. How's that going to play out? We still don't necessarily know that, but we also know, I guess, back from about 15 years ago that, that retail, just bricks and sticks buildings have reduced too because what's everybody doing? If I shop out, how many times you go to the store to buy something, you go to Amazon, and it's constantly bringing you vitamins and toothpaste or whatever rather than go, go buy it. And so, that whole industry is turning upside down a little bit, but what has happened during that time is that retail need has become more of a food and beverage destination. And if you've seen what's happened at Mosaics and some of the Mosaic development has occurred, um, that's a lot of food and beverage and entertainment. And that's what people are really gravitating to right now. So this is gonna be the focal point in the North Village of that kind of activity with being a destination for the, for the rest of North Village residents and anyone in Pittsburgh to come to that area for many restaurant uses, many, I don't know how many drinking establishments you need, one or too many, but uh, <laughs> Mr. Massey can weigh in on that, of what would be appropriate. Um, but that'll be, that'll be that destination in, in the village center. And then there'll be support if the, right now that, that red building down there shows um, what we anticipate to be the second grocery store. We've got a, obviously the first one is opening in the next month or so below. Uh, and it takes, a, you know, we part of, a, you know, a lot of these use locations is trying to determine um, where grocery stores are needed. And a lot of times you'll see that if, for, for the longest time in Pittsburgh, you know, you've had to drive somewhere else for the most part uh, if you wanted a wide selection of grocery needs. Uh, that'll start changing and when development starts coming like this generally your groceries will locate a, a mile apart or something like that sometimes you'll see more than one at one intersection um, but looking at that sort of placement of those kind of uses is an important part of this whole equation when you're looking at land uses and so that's going to again be part of this this area as well just to the east of it is still part of the village center but so we've got the ymca is getting ready to start construction um, there's a 30 acre park that's going to be in there. We're going to um, have some other, we'll talk about this when we get the condition, but that space in front of the YMCA, right? I don't know if you can put that green space. That is going to be staff, one of st the staff condition. I mean, we got into the use of the, the our master plan allows us to use some, uh, use private recreation land that we own but the public can use much like we aren't we are proposing this for that green space in mosaic where they've got their stage but that could, that's an example of the public getting to use that but it's not town owned and maintained and having obligations of taking care of this sort of thing this space in front of the y is going to be the same sort of thing it'll be a public green space that we are going to retain the ownership of but that would become an example of how we would meet some of those um, other talk with discussions about how are we meeting parkland uh, but that we haven't talked about this before because we haven't 
we have to get into specific design of spaces and areas to know exactly where those might turn out. They're starting to show up. That's, a little, that's another little thing about the, the small area plan. When we, we'll go to the south of it, with a with a small area plan, it's wide open, nothing stopped, started yet. So it's a whole new, it's a whole different scrutiny of what that plan is. Same way it was the first time around with the small area plan in the north. Now things are happening. We, we've got real numbers, we've got real plans, we've got buildings going up. And so all of a sudden you're reacting to those a little bit with this proposal, as opposed to showing you something that could be, this all of a sudden become a lot different because roads are going in, uh, buildings are going in, places are being, spaces are being used, parks are being built, things like that. So um, this, this meant to me is the most significant change that we're proposing in here just because it does move some of the numbers of dwelling units over towards Chatham Parkway. I don't think I've gotten into exactly what I think Mr. Bonds was concerned about wanting to have more density alone. And, and, um, Nick spoke to it earlier. This is a, this will be one of our, if not the primary transit corridor, it will be one of the primary transit corridors. And so within um, locating those units and allows us, we've got, we've got an affordable housing requirement. And we're going to be, our requirement is that, uh, I'll say right now, what we're planning to do is, um, it's, shape, it's not any sort of condition or anything, but that's the way we're looking at these apartments, is we're going to be trying to, they will be market rate apartments built for anyone, but 10% of those will be, will meet the affordable housing criteria. That's the way we're going to meet our requirement um, as we go through the development of the project. And so, Adjacent to that will be transit, adjacent to that will be a grocery store. So you've got a lot of the, the amenities that typically need to be near what would be affordable units and workforce units, and they're able, you're able to walk and bike to them. So that's an important consideration of moving this density out to that to that area. Um, and Chevin and Robbie, we have one more graphic here that'll this is just developing this, but this is kind of a, a bird's eye of that area that's in the heart of that village, village center area. And so you were asking about the height of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Typically, you know, you go four story, once you, once you go above four stories, it becomes a much more expensive method of development because you get into steel versus wood. And so you'll see a lot of it, the early iterations of density will be four stories. Um, and some of these will be surface parked. I think we're, we're planning right now without knowing for sure what comes back, but this, this would show a parking deck in the middle of that with the, with the units clad around the outside. Uh, again, this is conceptual. This is not, but it's trying to give you a picture of how we can get that sort of density in that space along Chattown Parkway. And then in the background, just to give you a frame of reference, is where the YMCA is. Um, so you know, let me let me just do it this way. If anybody just about that particular item, if anybody's got any questions or uh, thoughts that you might want to bring up, board members, any anything you'd uh, like to drill down on with uh, Chuck or Robbie? Can you go back to the graphic that shows like the wider view this where one. the hospital is moving? Oh, sure. The, yeah, the map of okay. like that. I mean, with zero for a zoom in on this. Yeah. I just had a question. In the previous one, it looked like that 6.2 area was more condensed. And now it's, what is the 6.1 in the center of it? And how is that going to? Well, really, what happens with, you know, between those 6.1s and 6.2s, um, and the reason some of this occurred is in the in the original master plan, 6.1 was, was a totally non-residential area that did not allow residential. Okay. Okay. And that's not not, part. Right, exactly. And so, as you, you know, you, you cut to the chase years later, office parks are really, you don't see them mm -hmm. occurring as much anymore. You're really seeing more mixed use development. And so how could we do that? And so that's why this, the, you know, the, the hospital moving down to you can see medical district pointing mm -hmm. to that area. So that's where the hospital's going. And I really think that once, and if you've seen, and I know you're, you've lived in Cary, so you've seen this, but where Wake Med is on uh, Tryon Road and, yeah. and uh, Kildare Farm Road, that hospital started, there were no medical offices around it. Now they're <laughs> buying up neighborhoods to tear down to build medical office. So um, that is, we'll be we'll be using a lot of that blue area for med medical office along China Parkway, I predict. And then um, there could be some things that are built as early iterations of residential that because you need to get rooftops in before office comes, 
And then when that starts happening, you start seeing a lot of those torn down and then office buildings going in. So um, that was, I won't be around for that to, to watch that play out, but um, <laughs> Mr. Massick will, and he can tell us. <laughs> what we're talking about. So, that, and so, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but. Um, <laughs> Chuck, uh, UNC has a fair few uh, medical offices that are behind Bojangles. Yes, sir. Would they be wanting to ship these down into the uh, medical campus? This is possible. One of the, the, at least right now, and I'm giving you this is inside baseball information. And yeah. you know, we're still working these kind of things out. But the first thing they're going to do, you just don't walk out and build the hospital. The first thing. Of so the first thing, and this is this will follow the the pattern that occurred in Holly Springs with their hospital that they located there. But it'll the plan is for, I think, a 75,000 square foot medical office building. That would be the first building that they build, and it will be on that site. And that will then, you know, slowly transition and phase into future other medical office and the hospital. I don't know if that means they would then move people out from that. We've got that the, the next to our office of the 25,000 square foot medical office building there. And I don't know if that means, or, yeah. but if you've seen in Chapel, they, they've got so many different spots of sure. in Chapel Hill of medical yeah. office and things that they would love to consolidate in the fewer areas that they own and maintain. But this, once you get going in that direction, it's tough to undo that. Um, so it, it's, it's hard for me to believe that, that it would no longer be medical office, but yeah. it's in, in a transitional period, it should be, and then could even go back to it and say, look for, for more in the future. It's a general, right. general question. As I read through office, I see some of the changes that we were asked to be made. Is any that there's any because of mortgage money? It looks like more high density type construction happening, or before we're talking about, you know. We are 50, 400, 500,000 dollars. Is that right? It's something that we're changes that we're looking at. When you're, you're, I think what you're getting at is because of the cost of money and higher interest rates, then it's, some people choose to rent versus for a period of time versus buy because their, their payment would be so much more because of that extra cost because of a higher interest rate. Um, so there's some of that going on that we, we're seeing the need for more rental units. Actually, I can just see as I go through one different thing, it looked like this has been changed over to more of a high density type. Well, the other thing going on, and we've talked about this before, but I can't remember if you've been in the room, because it's great being in the room. Yeah, you exactly. Know, yeah, you really can talk. Getting on those, you know, yeah, wondering if you can be heard, and the internet's falling off, and all that. Yeah. Um, but the um, Chatham County. And you've seen this, it has historically been behind in the number of apartment units that have been provided in Chatham County. And that's why it's been hard in many ways to get school teachers and other people who, who work in the schools here and have to live, but they can't live here because you don't have apartments as that starting place for you know, living in a, in a house when you get out on your own, when you graduate from school and you live with a roommate. Um, Powell Place built theirs. Mosaics building there is we're, we're, we're really trying to now catch up in the triangle area historically 30% 25% of the housing has been apartments and that's been pretty consistent year after year after year after year. And so if you look at if you look at that with Chatham Parks numbers, we, if we've got 22,000 um, total units, then I think it'll be more like 30% because of the trends that have gone with people preferring to, to live in rental property versus owning and also what interest rates have come. But, and so much of it recently has been, it's not just living in apartments, one of the, one to live in a single bedroom apartment. The, the percentage of one bedroom apartments has greatly increased over the last number of years as opposed to a family living in a three bedroom apartment. There, that, that need has gone more to singles and couples living in one bedroom apartments or condominiums. And so that's trying to catch up because it just hasn't been here in Chatham County. And the school board has mentioned a number of times recently how great it's been for them to be interviewing new candidates for teachers and for administration because they've got places to show them where they can live and show them places that are coming. And people are, are excited about teaching in Chatham County because they don't have to drive 30 miles to live somewhere else. Anyway, this, this is a 
not everybody would agree with it, but I think it's a good change that's occurring, that's needed to occur as just to serve kids if nothing else. Um, so I don't know, there were a couple of questions. Yeah. There. So I, I get off. Are there other yes. uh, board member questions? Charity, you're, you're I'm sorry. satisfied? Yes. Bill? Are we, are we still talking about the specific thing, or are we, if you like to. Are we getting broad now? Well, we can get broad if you want. Well, I wasn't sure where, where well, I'm going where to you my were. next point. I'm going, okay. to, I'm going to go to the right of that. Okay. Thank so you. Yeah, Trump just asked if we had questions about that. Specific yeah, just that one. Okay. All right. Yeah, I yeah, know I invited that. Get confused it. Um, okay. Next is the issue of, and Molly did a good job of, of, of explaining this, but. Um, we've been working with staff and DOT for the last, I don't know, year, year and a half, Morgan's been involved in conversations, and Molly's been involved. As we started this transition of new banks uh, going uh, through uh, in the location we show it now towards Chatham Parkway. And then is this a state road? Is it a town road? How many lanes is it? That sort of thing. And so that was, uh, that's been going on, and uh, with us rather has been has already gotten the first sec first phase of that. I think it's primarily where you see the, the blue color. Yeah, that shows that as being a four lane uh, road. It was originally going to be DOT road. It's transitioning now to where I think the town is taking that. Uh, there's been some some of the comments that came from the public too. Is there's there's more town roads who's paying for those. <laughs> We're paying for those roads. Uh, it's not DOT. It's not public tax money, or we are paying for those roads um, in any of these roads. Chatham Parkway is the only one that's a state funded road. Um, and so the first phase of Eubanks is under development, under construction right now, and that it's uh, clearing and grading is going on up there. And that's where the YMCA location is going just south of that. Uh, but that, that transition of Eubanks going in that direction has occurred working with DOT and uh, we had I also didn't mention we've got Kevin Dean on the on, on virtually on here who's with Kimley Horn. If we had if you have any sort of transportation or traffic related questions related to this item or any others, he's ready to prepare to answer those if you've got any of those. Um, but then at that point, you know, what is this second road? The, the first comments we were getting, and we got them to the in the community meeting was that you've moved Eubanks closer to the river. I explain, well, this, this is not Eubanks. This is another road. Well, you moved a big road closer to the river. No, it's not a big road. It's a residential street. It, it, it will show the cross section in a matter of these two streets. Um, but it's a, it's a two lane residential street uh, with parking in some places, depending on exactly what the type of residential is that's going on in front of it. In other places, it doesn't have parking. It's the same style of street we've got where we've been planting street trees. Uh, between the curb and the sidewalk or multi-use trail. So um, if if we were, and this, I think the Eubanks part of this has been more the need for a revision to the small area plan, but we can build that that level road in that location without changing the small area plan. And as Molly said, that, that's still, we haven't, we haven't gotten in there and looked at exact um, Rock locations, topo, we've gotten the stream crossings approved. So with our with our individual permit, we've gotten from the Corps of Engineers. So we know where stream crossings are, um, but we're not, this is, there's no more impact than is already allowed. And I think that's an important point. Uh, it doesn't change the percentage of trees that are gonna be lost. We have the same requirements for keeping a certain percentage of trees within a certain distance of the Hall River. We've got a certain, we've got the, percentage that are required when we're doing residential neighborhoods, that's not changing. Um, it's not changing the buffer along the Hall River. This, we're still, all those are still intact and all, as Molly said, all of those are being used uh, in the review of any plans that come in with the subdivision before they're approved. And uh, Randy's already been shown that he's willing to throw a condition at us to because if he doesn't think that we're doing something that meets the spirit of what we're trying to do. So the staff's been pretty good about um, leading in that direction. And I, I imagine that would continue to be the case. So I know, I mean, this is this has been more confusing than anything, and I'll take responsibility for that. Uh, you know, 
think Ms. Robertson is on the line, but when we were in the community meeting, I mean, I was talking about this, and the, the line weight of the road that was the same as Chatham Park Oil, well, then it must be the same size. Was, but we were we were confusing about that because you know, we've changed the line weight since then and what we have now just to try to, and it's still at the scale, it's hard to see. But we're going to show the cross sections. We're probably going to pull those up. But uh, the first one, the next slide is the uh, this is Umax Road that, that we just discussed, and it's a in the area we we're talking about. It's two lanes on each side of a median. There's parking on the south side. Uh, there's a multi-use path on the north side, and a sidewalk on the south side. But it's we're showing a hundred foot right away there. And I think it's also 100 when you get down closer to uh, 64 business, um, where the, uh, the those flex buildings are going in. And we've been talking about again that cross section there. The only place that we're transitioning because we don't own the land um, near. I mean, y'all just considered this was a pretty big lodge. But once you leave Chatham Park, heading north in that direction, you get, there's a gap there. Know, that, that we don't control right away. We, there's a, we do have, uh, I think there's a 60 foot, um, I don't know if it's right away or easement, but it allows, we built a construct, we built a gravel road in there for construction access already in anticipation of the road, of the connection being made. But the, with conversations with the town and with DOT, the town portion of the road would go right just about where you see the cursor there. Eubanks, Eubanks takes that um, hard turn to the right, right? Go down to you where the curve, right there, right there, and then that's Eubanks as it goes to the right. And I, so the town, what well, the town response, what and Morgan maybe can talk about this more in addition to what I'm saying. But the town portion of the road would go down to that crook that Robbie just started at, and then from there it would become state maintenance and state owned from that point south. Um, and so it'll transition from we're building four lanes where we. Can at the beginning, and then as, as we further develop, it'll, we'll, we'll continue that construction of that road. But at that point, you just, and primarily because of that crook and that curve, it's hard to meet engineering standards without having to go, go get additional right of way. Are you saying you want to start at the end of the state maintained? For with, where the town maintenance or the town ownership, town maintenance would take place at that point. So, what we're, we, you can see that little panhandle that comes down there. Uh, with the sap in the blue. Uh, is that where the existing paving stops? I think the existing paving stops it's right. The existing Eubanks Road ends right here. Mm -hmm. And then we built gravel construction from that point north. Okay. Yeah. Following that easement that we've got, but we couldn't build the future road in that area because one, it'll be more right away, and two, it'll. That you can't meet that curve standard for safety purposes with that size road. So that'll be the big road. And that's really trying to, again, it, it comes out right where all that density was talking about. We were just discussing earlier. Uh, go ahead. Would that be a gain by eminent domain or how, how will that access or easement be grown? Well, you know, fortunately, and I know Ms. Cullington, so there have been different comments about this. Are these roads going to be I think when Molly said this is conceptual, well, conceptual I mean that's what happened at Northwoods. All of this, other than this stretch, is happening on our property. So if, it, if things move around a little bit, it impacts us. Here, it's it's really going to be the town and the state term, determining the point in time when it needs to be widened. Because you can you could build a two lane um, paved roadway in that area now in the existing easement, and at some point it. it it may need when it gets to that point where it needs more than two lanes, and that'll be a conversation of going out and getting that additional right away. Usually, what happens in places where things like this occur is those adjacent properties, once development starts, they could start coming in like Green Beagle Lodge did and propose to build something. And usually, at that point, the town would say, You need to reserve this amount of right away on your frontage there for a future expansion of that road, things like that. Uh, will that happen here? I don't. I don't know, but um, it, you're right, though. It could eventually become something where they're going to deal the same sort of way, eminent domain of taking the right away. Definitely Eubanks land? I think Mr. Eubanks land is 
farther to the farther east. down. Yeah, I think he's over here. Okay. At the end of the dirt. That's right. That's, that's my understanding. You got a road named after him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just road. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know. That's, and let's go to the, uh, the section of uh, that. Well, first of all, anybody got any questions about the section of UMAX? This is pretty much underway right now in construction. And then the, I'm sorry. Um, my question is will the parking be yeah, along the whole length of the road? Now, Robbie, go back to the, I think the illustrative may, yeah, that, that one that you just passed at least. Yeah. Well, it shows the fact that on the south side of the road there, we've got residential, um, residential facing, it'll be the front, okay. the front doors and porches of that residential will be facing the street. So it's trying to, you said we've done it for some Similar of the have, yeah. yeah. And, and on Bike Parkway too. And yeah. so that's why on that side it has somewhat been because um, of some of the confusion about bike lanes, some people on buying, we didn't put parking along there. People have been using the bike lanes for parking you know, as much mm -hmm. maybe by construction traffic. But when you put somebody's front door, the most convenient thing to do is park as close to your front door as you can. And so even though they've got parking spaces at the back door, they're also using the front door to park. That's a, a And those issue. are townhomes? Some are town, maybe all of these are townhomes, uh, but they're either narrow sink. It's more of a urban <laughs> new, New neo traditional style of um, of residential, but we've got the uh, because we're we're putting the parking on that side. We've got a sidewalk on that side, and then we've got the multi use trail on the north side. Um, and we've got on, the, on that parallel street to the south, we've got a multi use trail on there. Don't we? Um, I don't know. Uh, it transitions in the greenway here, but uh, I think it's a sidewalk here because we'll be coming to you soon. Talking about the park, the 30 acre park that will be down there. Um, so, anyway, that, that, that's why the parking is on, not on both sides and on one side. And, and that relates to what I was talking about, that, the spine road. Yeah, I thought it would probably go back to the show of planning of the spine road. And Mr. Messick was laughing about the spine road. I thought, I thought it was because it looked very similar to his spine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to vote? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say mine too. <laughs> um, so you want to go to the cross section of yep. Let's put on what spine road. Yeah. So here we go. Spine road. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, she did. We put that in. I if you want me to change that, I'll be happy to rename it. Um, but you can see it's much different character from the UMAX road. It's two lanes and it, and it shows a space for parking, but my, you see that tree behind it sort of clouded out because in some places there would not be parallel parking and that space would be taken up with uh, plant, plant additional planting area between the multi-use trail and the curb where there would be jut outs and, the, and, the, and it follows then the, you know, becomes more of a two-lane section without the parking. So these parking spaces are more cut into the landscape where, where parking is needed. Back to that conversation about what goes on the front doors of the houses. Um, and so we've got on, and that's the other unique thing about this, because this, everywhere else in Shannon Park, I'm going to say everywhere else, so tell me if I'm wrong, but we've generally been treating multi-use trails where you've got a five foot sidewalk and you know, then we put a five foot easement behind it to accept the additional width of, the, of, the, of a 10 foot sidewalk. We call it a multi-use trail. And we're trying to put those in locations with connecting greenways to greenways, more places where people are. It's not that a sidewalk can't handle the walk, but it gives more walking room because we anticipate more pedestrian traffic in those areas. And so this road is something that, we've anticip that we're anticipating more pedestrian use and therefore we putting the entire 10 foot multi-use trail within the right of way so that's where the right of way width gets a little bit far a little bit wider to accept that but again it's a two-lane residential street now what about Ms. Shaver you uh, you may have other questions about that but, um, but I know this was an this, this was an important point that <coughs> came up in the public comment it was really universal almost 
in every comment. So I want to make sure that's understood because we don't feel like, again, once I didn't feel like people understood it. But as I said, I think that was my well, that was my fault. Um, but as as we talked about in the existing small area plan, we could be putting that road. We could be putting a road like at that level of road with two lane residential street in that location today. We have other questions on the uh, flows of the transportation. I have a question about this area of the Spine Road that um, is closest to the Haw River, like in the northeast kind of section. That gap of land in there, it's hard to tell with the scale what kind of development is going to be in that gap. Between, between the road and the river? Yeah. I think there could be none. Okay. And I think most likely, I mean, what a pretty common planning concept is when for people who don't like, you'll see a lot of times if you're building a lake or you're on a river, people want to live on the river. They don't want to accept public access between them, their land and the, their view. And so what you'll see a lot of times along a golf course or along the water where you want lot between the road and that amenity so that people driving who don't live on that get to experience that view and that scene and, and it, it increases their property value and increase, it increases their experience driving home. And so you try to, you'll try to do some things that you drop in little open space features uh, like that. That's, that's, if that occurs that way, again, that's a, you'll, you'll get to review that during the subdivision plan process and see exactly what's proposed. But that's usually what's going on. You're trying to give people the opportunity to uh, enjoy that experience. That was kind of what I was thinking. That would be like a nice opportunity for everyone to get to and that's, hop off and get on that right. sidewalk and enjoy the yeah, exactly what's going on. So that's the guiding force between the changes. <laughs> well, other people may not agree with that, but that's what. That's your reasoning for making but, it. Right. Before, and the other thing, but the other, Robbie, I don't know if you can, or Molly had it on her slide, but we had a state road going through the middle of it before. And that does not have house, that doesn't have driveways on it. It doesn't have a parking on it. It's a, it's a larger road trying to get people through. And we didn't like that for the character of the neighborhood to be including that in that area. So we, okay. we wanted to go back to more of a residential character within the neighborhood. One more question. Please. Um, it's not understanding our living since I've moved down to North Carolina, but many of uh, Native Americans along the river that used to be a draw for them. Is there any archaeology going on? We have. This, this was it started in the master plan, just saying that um, we would pay attention to that. And then in the small area plan that's been approved, there's a chapter on it, chapter eight. It didn't change in this, so I don't think it's included in what you've got now. But we have a gentleman named Paul Webb, and he's been at my house with Danny. Okay, yeah, he's yeah, been no, working. No, no. He produced his presentations with the historic, um, the Channel County Historic yeah. Association. Oh, he's on the board. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, it, but, it. Um, but Paul is pretty respected. He's been doing all of our assessments and he does before what we with the small area plan before said before we go into the design of a neighborhood he goes in does his assessment and then we use that in the design and so that's another reason these roads aren't necessarily as molly says they're conceptual there's still things whether it's exact outcroppings of rock whether it's <coughs> exact knowing where it's going the stream crossing is through the stream on the ground uh, whether it's, it's some steeper topo we want to avoid. There are things like that that influence the design of that road until we get in there and really start designing the subdivision in the neighborhood there. You can't do it exactly, so this is still somewhat um, conceptual. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any further questions? Um, something specific? Or what? No, that's the question. Why do open up the transportation at the moment? I'm going to talk parts of the last Okay, I'm, I'm going to wait till, till uh, He's all done. Yeah. Shall we move on to uh, parks? Are we uh, satisfied with the answers on transportation? Yeah, the floor, sir. Okay. So the, um, the the final and Molly mentioned this, and this is really where staff got into their uh, conditions. But the, uh, the the first thing I'd like to say is we are not proposing to reduce the number of uh, the amount of parkland in Channel Park. 
That's not what this is doing. Um, and this is a reminder, and I can't remember if we've got a specific this, but for, for every house we build, we've got to provide a 1 33rd of an acre part of the town for public use. Okay. And so what we did, what we did in the original small area plan is we show that the maximum number of acres or the maximum number of dwelling units we have and base the number of park acres off of the maximum because that what that's what could be. And we have to plan for it. And so when you when you do um, a 33rd of an acre, the, the number of units in the North Village is 7,548. 7, so you multiply that out, you get 229 park acres. We can make that up with Greenways Park Land, basically. Um, so, but that's the max. So, cut a couple of years later after that's approved, what's happened? We 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 pretty much built out the vineyards. I mean, y'all are familiar with the vineyards. And between that area and that that vineyards area down there around Chatham Parkway and what's been built, we're already um, about 600 units less than the maximum. Okay, and I can't I can't take those and put them up and use them up in the north further north. I mean that's what the plan does is say we've got maximum number of units in each of these sections, and so it helps define then the character of what's going on. And but anyway, so with what we've built, we've got about 600 less. With what we have plans for, that we, you know, again, when we turn in a small area plan, we don't have the specifics of what we know like we know today when we're doing this revision. And we've got another 400 or so that we know are less in other areas than the maximum. So we've got about a thousand. At the end of the day, we're going to have about a thousand units. And that, that this was one of the reasons I was confident that I, that I could meet the condition because. At the end of the day, I think we're going to have about 20 or 30 acres less that's going to be required by the maximum, resulting in a number around 200 acres um, for the North Village. And so that's what we that's the what we're trying to hit with that number. So we are trying to say we're moving them to the south or we're, or we're using a south park to meet it. The reason it gets into that is because in the um, in the element, well, in the master plan too, it said, okay, you're not all, you're going to provide a 33rd of an acre. For each dwelling unit, but you've got to you've got to give it at a faster rate. You've got to give it at a 125th of an acre. So that means what it ultimately means when you look at all of Chatham Park is we base the number of park acres on 22,000 units. That's the maximum number of units we have. That that means we've got 667 acres of park land over all of Chatham Park. But we have to give it back to the town by the time we get to 16,000 units. So that means you've got 6,000 units or an area about that size that doesn't have parks in it. If you keep providing it at that pace in those areas as you went along. So then I started, well, I, I can't have, a, you know, 2,000 acres or 1,500 acres without parks in it. So I've got to be able to distribute them down there. Um, but with what's been, we're just, we're not, we don't need to do that. Here. And so we're going to, we'll meet this requirement in the North Village as staff has requested. Now, well, that, that no, exact number of acres, there's no way to know the exact number of acres until we build, you know, we could, there could be another house, there could never be another house built in there, we don't have to build another park. Uh, that's not going to be what happens. Um, but that's, and the other thing that we've discovered with our homeowners, and this problem is really true for the public too, once you start putting things on a map showing this is where a park is, and then you take it away, you've broken a promise even though it was based on maximum units and those maximum units don't realize themselves but how do you walk away from that so that's what you know we're trying to we're trying to balance reality and what's being built versus what the max is going to be and i think the condition does a good job of protecting uh making sure that enough's going to get provided but at the same time not not overdoing it up front so that's um, I, I, if, any questions about that uh, before we just get, and I, I mean, there's some general points to make too, but any questions related to parks? Any questions, board members? I just have another question about your um, map. What are the kind of the green mushy lines? Mushy lines. <laughs> That's a planning term. The <laughs> <laughs> technical term. <laughs> What, what mush? What the, the green snaky lines? Okay, that's the those are the repairing. Those uh, are the streams with okay, gotcha. hundred foot bumpers on each side of those. Okay. 
that's the school map. You know, that's well, that's, that's school, exactly. that's schools and parts. The other thing that brings up the point of um, just going back to the Malat site, there the, there was some talk we you can't use the Malat Park to meet Chatham Park requirements, and we aren't going to do that. And I think we talked about this a little during y'all y'all we had Malat property before you a couple months ago as well, and right. Malat will have its own park requirements for itself that we have to meet. So. We just have sort of an internal thing here. Upper is a natural area. Right. Lay that out. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's the most effective. In, I mean, these guys in the room, I mean, one of the things they've been most concerned about is leaving a proper amount of um, undisturbed area along a stream. That does the best job of filtering pollutants before, it get, before they get into the stream. Um, the town requirement is 50 foot. The state requirement in this watershed is 50 feet. We've got 100 feet. Now, people have said you should have, I mean, I wouldn't talk a long time. That's not, you want me to go on about numbers? I can, but um, <laughs> that's bad. That's basically what, what they're there for. It's and just like good. helpful visually to imagine that all of those areas are going to be green. And natural. Yeah, well, the other, again, this gets into, I mean, this is an important point, but um, providing providing wildlife corridors that when you get into talking to the state about there, like there have been some recommendations for some requests from some people to go 600, 300 feet wide on each side of those, because you get a 600 foot wide corridor and there's one or two birds that can thrive in that 600 feet that don't thrive in a two or 300 foot area. And so, I mean, we can't, we, we can't meet every, every request like that, but that, that's the, that's how, nuanced it gets when you're looking at a lot of what happens with riparian buffers and and we talked to the i mean we met with the wildlife commission we met with fish and wildlife and, and tried to we talk you know figure a lot of these things out but i mean i i know a lot of people would say that 100 feet on each side of the stream is not enough but we feel pretty good about that because it's more than anybody else would like <laughs> and we think and also our stormwater guys I mean, there's once you want that if you increase that to 400 feet, there's not that much more effectiveness in the value of what it's doing to stream water quality. So, 100 that's why the, a lot of people have come to this 100 foot number. It wasn't just pulled out of a you know, pulled out of the air, it's based on uh, pretty, pretty smart people looking at data that can explain it. Randy knows more about this, I think, than most people in the room. We could talk about it, but um, anyway, so that's what those are now. Back to Malat, we're not going to meet Chatham Park requirements. With, I mean, Malat's got their own requirements. And what we've said is that if there's any excess acreage in that Malat Park, that that could be used, and that's because the uh, elements allow us to do that. But that could be thrown at Chatham Park requirements. And we've got that. You can see that green strip on the south side of it. We're combining those two areas to get to a 25 to 30 acre park that's shown straddling the Malat and uh, Chatham Park line. Any further questions? If not, Chuck, you had some summary points you wanted to make. Yeah, you know, just a these little, maybe this, some of these might get into Shaker's questions, but um, other things that have been part of this, at least part of what we described in this document you've got, we, when the original small area plan was before the town, the, the school, the public school site was in the, in the east of Chatham Parkway. They didn't want that site. They, they settled on it. We talked about this during the lot, but they settled on a site next to where we showed them a lot park in that red, the red area that right there, straddle again, straddling the line between the lot. And that'll be about a 26 acre gift to the, to the school system for an elementary school. Um, we have it, the ramp off the of Chatham Parkway has changed probably three times since we even submitted this revision on how that's going to be handled. I mean, I don't, you may want to go to the rendering or the plan view or whatever, whatever you think is the best. Yeah, you can see how, first of all, well, here, here's the old thing. Yeah, that's, that's the existing Suttles Road alignment right now. When you come off the ramp, off of 64 Bypass and come up to Chatham Parkway, that you go straight across and it goes on the Suttles Road and gets, comes over to the office from Mojangles in that area. 
So DOT came back and we've had two different proposals on the location of this, but what's gonna, what is, I think is the final resolution is that Suttles is going to turn into, Robbie's drawing the line now, Suttles is gonna turn up through right behind that red box that we call the grocery store. That'll be Suttles new alignment and then tie in there at the intersection of Eubank. So somebody smarter than me are gonna be able to figure out what those road names are gonna be uh, when the two different things come together. And then originally we thought that there was gonna be a west approach directly on the 64 this bypass as it's shown right there basically with that white road. It's not quite where the existing <laughs> Suttles alignment is, but that, uh, that went away in process and they're now gonna put dual that, that, one's, that road is going away. That portion of Suttles is going away. And I haven't put any, I mean, as I said, it's changed three times since we have turned in this revision of the small area plan. But what's gonna happen is you'll come south on Chatham Parkway and turn left where the existing exit. Bobby, can you just draw or zoom in on? It's going to take. It's going to become a dual dual left lane and two left lanes on that ramp to handle the traffic and not have a west bound. Yeah. So yeah, right. You can turn left there. Yeah. And continue on that ramp to go westbound. And this is, it's, it's one lane that's going to become two lanes. And so that's the way they're going to handle it now rather than building another exit. Turning to the right and heading west. You're modifying everything that you've got up there. Well, some of it, not everything, but not to where we've been. I mean, it costs, the most important part of this, we're trying to work out where utilities go. And so you get something worked out with the pipe to. Or the gas people or the you know and then all of a sudden the alignment changes and they don't have that right of way to work it anymore and so anyway it's become something we're having to aggressively stay on top of um is it been covered these have been covered oh there was one concern about um <coughs> don't pay greenways on the state park we are we don't control that we are not proposing to do that and we were proposing to build a paved greenway in our land uh, along the Haw River because of the number of people who are going to be using it. It's, it's going to be tough to maintain if it's, if it's soft surface. Um, so, but we don't, we're, we're obviously work, working with the state, and there's a plan going on right now about what the Haw River greenway is going to be, but we're not proposing to pave state land. They won't, right now, unless they change something, they won't allow it. Um, the Bynum connection has been something that continues to come up that in the past, what we've, and we've been, we've gotten letters and I've answered those letters that say, we're, we're not proposing to connect to, to Bynum Church Road with, with our roads. What we're saying is, is that the town's GDO requires us to make roadway connections like that. And if the town and the board decides not to do it, we're not doing it. Uh, there may be a, you know, something where there's an emergency, emergency access or something like that, but we, we're not we'll let that play out when subdivisions come up there and frankly it's just as safe for Bynum residents to have another way out of there than being on a you know dead end roads they can only get out one way in an emergency situation so yeah we're not that'll be up to the town staff town board members and you guys when that when that comes along with that level of detail so we haven't been saying no we're going to go ahead and connect that and say that we're, but we have been sort of been deferring to uh, to you guys later Okay, any other? Let's, let's shot my bullets. Anybody? Anything else for uh, Chuck and Robbie? A lot, a lot to be considered here. Now, as uh, Molly said, going into this, the board uh, has before it uh, four uh, possible uh, paths. Uh, one is that we uh, recommend uh, approval of the uh, small area plan amendment and send that along to the town board. We can uh, send it along with a recommendation that it not be approved. We can uh, send it along with uh, recommended amendments, or we can uh, defer this matter for 
further study. So I'll uh, I'll entertain a motion for the board. Uh, if I could interrupt. Really yeah, quickly. please. Follow. We did have one person sign up to speak who's present. Let's call him. Oh, please, please. Yes. Please after, please Thank you. Do I have to speak to the laptop? No, no. no. Is there speaker here? Yeah. Okay, I'm only going to take about 15 seconds. Um, I basically, I'm using public comments to get, get an answer to a question, but I just want to make sure that you all have had a chance to read all the public comments. I know mine are very long, plus I, I sent in the supplemental comment. Um, so I just wanted to ask if you all have time to read them. We, uh, we, we, we all have them in our packets, and I, 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 have, to, I have to compliment the commenters because uh, 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 many of the comments are highly detailed and uh, very thoughtful and uh, exceptionally well presented. And I, I, I have to say, I am deeply impressed by the, uh, by the comments. I just want to make sure the majority of <coughs> had a chance to read them. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, make sure that her um, address and things are there. But generally, I'm sorry, not trying to make you call, but generally people announce that information. I appreciate it. Yeah, 390 Rocky Hills Road. It is Rocky. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but thanks very much for, okay. for reminding us of that. There, there are excellent comments. And I can confirm um, that the additional comments, so the ones that were in your packet were mm -hmm. the ones received, and then we re did receive comments from six more people yes. in that interim period. And I can confirm those are the ones that you have uh, there that I sent to you last Friday. Right. Um, and so, in case they're on the call, so they know that you received them, we received additional comments from Whitley, Green, Hyatt, La Palma, Long, and Collinson. Thanks very much, Molly. So, all right, uh, board members, I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, at your uh, pleasure. Uh, which way do we want to go with this? I would prefer you open it for discussion. Do you want to open it for discussion? <laughs> go right ahead, Carl. I'm sitting here for Go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. No, 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 I wasn't I, I was uh, trying to. You know, you know really, uh, I've got a bunch of tabs here, and it, it largely boils down to, to, to one sort of broad sweeping comment. Uh, and I had I had my tabs before I looked at the com the public comments. Uh, many of them are, are are parallel to what the public has submitted. Uh, years ago, this was RA five. I know that's water under the bridge. You know now it's PDD. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna coin a term I heard tonight in the spirit of in the spirit of this in the spirit of that. In some of in some of some of Chatham. Parks preamble language 15, 18 years ago, we heard environmental superiority for water quality, for buffering, for, for access to streams and so forth. You know, I know the 100 foot is, is above state standard. Uh, but when you look at the density and there's a map in there, it shows, you know, it is indeed tiered back from the Hall River, one dwelling unit per acre. Up the hills so of two dwelling units per acre, three, and then we get into the, you know, you know, so so the density in here is is just incredible, uh, and that's going to be true of Chatham Park everywhere. It just is, uh, but I would like I would like, you know, at least to express the history for some of the, some of the board that has not seen the history years back, and uh, and and take a harder look at this. I, you know, we could we could sit here tonight and talk about my tabs and and come up with a bunch of conditions, but I think it would be hard to to be eloquent enough to make a condition that 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 applied to specific situations and get it where it's reasonable for the applicant and something we could something we could grasp. So that's my general comment. A lot of those again are very parallel to. Uh, to, to the public comments that have been that have been solicited. So having said all that, I'm going to make a motion to table uh, this until the July meeting. And the purpose of that motion is so that we all have a chance to really delve into this. Let's talk to Morgan. Let's talk to all the staff and see if the conditions we have are appropriate, prudent, relevant. And, and I'm really sinking my teeth in, in Tamali's comment that we have a moderate amount of discretion on this. Uh, you know, they don't, the town, the town commissioners obviously have more than, than we do, but we do have discretion. 
And so I would like us to think about some of the history getting to the point where you are, where, where we are now, and you can see, see what, what, what might come of that. So anyway, that's my justification for the table Very motion. Yep. Very good. Any, uh, any other discussion over a second to vote for motion? I just have a question. Please. Are you wishing to like um, for us to brainstorm some more conditions to get approval of this? Yes. As a group. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and again, I'm, you know, I'm scrapped for really being able to say anything, you know, uh, because they do have the PDD, and there may not be anything we can do in terms of density and setbacks. They've met all those kind of things. But I'm kind of hanging my hat on the whole discretionary comment about how we might look at this. You know, the whole river is impaired. Jordan Lake is impaired. It already is. It was impaired before Chatham Park ever came around the corner. Uh, but you know, a lot of people are moving here because of the beauty of our natural resources. And and every every one of these intensity developments is going to you know further impact that. It just is. You know, we can't help that. Uh, but I think we need to take a hard look at that and see what what may be reasonable and possible to do. And it may be nothing, but I think we need time to really dive into that. What I read into this, right. and I went through that whole document twice, I just see more high building, mm -hmm. high density building happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I moved down here about 2012. And I attended all your meetings with Chad right. Park and all this, and, and it was a live, work, play. It looked like there was going to be, you know, two acre lots and three acre lots, and I think that's mm -hmm. really a thing of the past. And I think we need to adjust and look at that in total with what we're going to be approving and make sure that it meets the town standards and where we're at. And I'm not there yet. I'm, mm -hmm. to be honest, with you, I'm a little confused. I'm, so you're wanting to second uh, Carl's motion? I would second Carl's motion. Okay, great second. <laughs> I'll put words in his mouth. Well, well that's fine. Any, uh, any, uh, <laughs> I think Eric wants to go home. No, 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 no. I want to, I want to give uh, everyone the proper hearing here. And, uh, and uh, I mean, the discussion is still open for more to the members of this. Anything further that anyone wants to uh, add before we call for a vote on uh, I'd like to hear from Carl's girl from, from the rest of us. You know, it was a lot for me to digest, Yeah. you know, but admittedly, I got it on a Friday, thinking we were going to vote on right. it two or three days later. But we, had, <laughs> yeah. we had ten days, not three. Yeah. Uh, so I've delved into it. But I just, I just want to be confident that that sure. we all have a good understanding of it. Okay. Uh, and, if, and if you all are good, you know, then so be it. No, I, Go ahead. Okay, I'm also um, on board and concerned with the density of these neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, I am on board with this notion given that we like create a follow-up meeting time or some kind of something actual so i don't i mean I'm not, I'm those sure. are my comments yeah like i agree with what's being said um but i feel like we need to do something actionable to like create the conditions or whatever so we can't meet without going through the proper channels yeah sure well, uh, we can we can send a memoranda to bali with that compile i'd like to come out i'm yeah. a little bit confused are we open the door on something that can't be closed later? It's a permitting process. I mean, what you well, mean, I mean, if, we, if we approve this thing, it's sure, right yeah. Now. Well, I, I guess that's is that making a standard that, that, that can't be changed when the actual permits come in to build these things? Yeah. So when if the smaller if the amendment is uh, approved ultimately by the board of uh, commissioners. We're looking at when development plans come through, we're looking at the master plan, the elements, and the small area. You have to follow that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just curious. Now, if we if we set up conditions, the commissioners are not obligated to adhere to them. Sir. No, they take your recommendation under advisement, just like staffs and the public sure. opinion, but mm -hmm. it's your recommendation <coughs> to make. So. Right. So we have a motion and a second on the uh, on the uh, table right now, and uh, we'll we'll uh, We'll vote if there's no further discussion by the board. Uh, all in favor of uh, tabling this uh, decision till our uh, July meeting. Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, unanimously. This is tabled until the uh, July meeting so that we uh, have time for further thoughts that uh, we might uh, pass along to Molly for um, conversation. 
and I, I'm all about if you, whatever we comment on, share with the applicants okay. uh, yes. and their right. engineering staff, you know, so we have a good iteration coming forward so we don't have a lot of questions next next month. Very good. Uh, our final, <coughs> excuse me, item of uh, new business is uh, basically a, a re request coming over from the <coughs> Board of Commissioners that we move our uh, meetings to the, <coughs> excuse me, third Monday of the month uh, from the uh, <coughs> present schedule, excuse me, from present schedule of the first Monday. And um, I uh, will put that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, I guess we need a motion to. Uh, oh, thanks very much. Actually, don't mind. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Wanted, wanted to fill in a couple of things. Um, I put together before the meeting a request with some uh, some dates that would fall into the discussion of having this meeting moved to the third Monday of the month uh, instead of the first. Uh, obviously, staff supports the idea of moving it to six instead of six thirty, which is one proposal. And we also discussed internally that um, we've been looking at some uh, different locations for the meeting. I think tonight's overcrowding situation might have uh, uh, sort of added a little bit of uh, weight to that suggestion. The problem is that many of the places that we've chosen, Zoom is not a possibility. We can take the meeting and air it after the fact to doing it outright with Zoom. So we're kind of looking for a one, two, three punch, which would be moving the meeting to the third Monday at the request of the Board of Commissioners, which uh, you all actually make your own schedule uh, once a year, according to 9.5.7 in the UDO. Um, there is a staff request to at least strongly consider a 6 p.m. instead of 6.30. Definitely don't want to go to 7. And I did want you all to give some consideration to um, taking live Zoom out of the mix and going to a pre uh, us recording it as it's happening and then airing it later. So it's a three, it's a threefold. So it's a threefold uh, <coughs> proposal and, uh, yes, sir. and uh, understandably moving to the uh, third uh, Monday is going to coordinate uh, better with uh, the way business flows uh, through the town uh, board. Um, do any of the board members have a strong feeling about moving to the third Monday from the first Monday and uh, going to a, a 6 p.m. start? This town board, uh, second and fourth? Yes. Yeah, okay, correct. That's why the third works out to better for, for them. What that location? Okay. TBD, to be determined. Trying to be not going to do Zoom. Well, that, that's okay. what Randy was uh, addressing. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're searching, searching for a venue that will accommodate us. Uh, the place that we used to meet in the town uh, hall has all been remodeled, and that big old long room that we used to meet in isn't there anymore. So, <laughs> I don't know, that was my reaction to it. It's been subdivided. What? It's been subdivided. Uh, what is the Zoom participation currently? Is there like a large? No. <laughs> okay. We have 11 people on. They are mostly um, applicants and staff personnel. So actually, I think all of them. And that because Amanda is the liaison from the Chatham County Planning Board. Okay. What are the town board meet where? Yeah, um, yeah. The yeah. 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 Center, but that's a no question in the That's a no go. I, I anticipated that. That's a no go. Oh, we, we, uh, the town is used, we have big meeting space yeah. in the back of our office that the town is used for the affordable housing task force, among other things. And, I mean, you're, we would offer that for nothing now. I realize that may not have the right um, <laughs> perception, but um, anyway, just know that that's, that's offered. Thank you, Jeff. We'll, uh, we'll, put that, uh, we'll put that into the hopper for consideration. I'm not sure that our legal counsel would, uh, would bless that, but... Uh, Nice, 
Um, one very minor, it's brought me uh, my attention while we're sitting here. Thanks yeah. for the 20th as a meeting day puts us uh, on the week of Thanksgiving. So we would want to reschedule that one at this point. The options that we were discussing internally were maybe moving it back to the first Monday of that month, November, so that we're clearly outside of uh, the Thanksgiving week. Well, at least kind of a short interval, though, from the- It does. There is always the option of also yeah. canceling. Yeah, which is well. I think it, you something know, you can do later. Yeah, you know, I think it's going to kind of depend on people's so Thanksgiving travel plans. That's so much push my luck. I have three requests. <laughs> yes, I, I understand. I mean, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm good with six. You know, Bill brought one time that though that's it might I'm be, here. I can honor staff, but it also I'm retired. I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like to propose a motion, Carl? Well, uh, the best <laughs> comment from before was that it might it might hinder. Working people, they're coming home from Raleigh. They get home. Yeah, they were to a ten of you. Yeah, yeah, uh, when you go to six, you're, you're kind of limiting working people from attending the meeting. Right. I'm going to make can I make a statement? So these are also scheduled throughout the whole year. So there's advance notice. Yes. Um, and so this isn't uncommon. Um, there's other jurisdictions that do have meetings earlier. There's actually some that have them during the day. And also the general statute default for the meetings is the first Monday of the month at 10 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you don't know really. Don't do it. Yeah. Which we're not proposing. Uh, yeah. but let me just say, yes. Yeah, so yeah, staff has been doing a lot better job at keeping our website updated and making sure that people are notified about things going on. And so that's also just part of it to make sure everyone's abreast of what's going on and they can contact us anytime with any questions they have or what potentially is coming up. No. So, okay, then I'll move for six o'clock. Carl, Carl moves for a six o'clock and uh, also to adopt the uh, the dates of the remaining six uh, meetings of this board for uh, 2023. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Passage given. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mr. Director. Uh, other than that, I was just going to say staff updates. Yeah, and staff updates at this point amounted to and really help you move this meeting uh, time. And uh, other than that, we have some other projects, but there'll be more on all those later. Okay. Any further uh, board uh, comments before we? Uh... I have a question. Go ahead, Ray. Payment in Missoula Park. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do we do with the money? Well, it the parks right. Yes, it does. Do it, 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 it's park, I'm sorry, it goes into the parks and rec department. The two potential options. Sorry, did you want to take this question? Yes, sir. Oh, you're going. Oh, okay. So my job depends on this. Okay, so <laughs> so okay, so basically you would have two options. It's either improve existing parks themselves or plug it into programming. So programming would be something that we offer as a recreation for the reason i'm asking is with the amount of people that are moving into our area yes sir if we don't expand our <coughs> lands, then the people aren't going to have this bottle wipe this this park land. that's why i was looking and i hear that so let's just go the other direction which is i'm sorry i guess this is the part i'm going to do right yeah. uh but yeah so basically there's probably nothing worse than a bunch of very small very scattered parks. The idea would be to improve on what we have, and then as we decide to develop further parks that are not being provided by this particular set of developers or someone else, or even the ones they are developing, uh, it would be an opportunity for us to also expand in a very meaningful way. I've worked in three uh, jurisdictions in the last 10 years where the parks were very much left over forgotten members of the family that never got any love. And um, specifically, I think when you're first starting out, and particularly as your population is expanding, your primary responsibility is to make the parks that you currently have that are public parks that are owned by the town better. Okay. And we have one now. I think we have six park sites currently. Is that right? Six, six extant sites. I haven't even visited all of them, but the, some of them are just fairly forgot like you said right? yes we'll go ahead i'm confused china park has to put up they have to build park or put up money in little park is, yeah if they don't build the parks then they have to put money it's a little bit about it but can any of that money be used 
on existing parks that are already in the town, such as a town lake park. Yeah, that's the plan. It's supposed to be uh, either in or near Cherry yes. Park. Okay, I didn't know. The good news is, as big as it is, that won't be part of the right. right. Near is near, near is a nice word. Near, 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 near is a relative term. Good that to <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate it. Very good question. Did that cover your question about what being low actually means? Yes, sir. Any other board comments before uh, I entertain a motion to uh, adjourn? No. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Move. Second, Second. Bill. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. All in favor, aye. Aye. Planning board stands right. adjourned. I tell you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.